Blitze. Everybody, it's your boy Maddie Rants. As you can see here, I just I just put a little something together. I don't I don't even know what I did over here. Like a little a little a little knot, a little front bang. I don't care. <laughs> I mean I do, but I don't because we're talking about Real World Homecoming New Orleans episode six, spiritual blessings. If you came here looking for more validation for either Matt or Julie, this is not the spot to go. This ain't the spot to go. It's not going to be. Okay, I'm dragging both that leather handbag and that uh, Platinum Rewards member at Pinkberry. Both of them getting in my mouth today. As we discuss Julie's uh, husband being there for some odd reason to help her have a conversation about Mormonism. And then we also have Matt conflicted with loving someone because of the sin. Oh, God, it's going to be a fun one. I hope so. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, do me a favor if you're already here and you're like, what's going on? My name is Maddie Rance. I do these reviews for many shows that are uh, sort of put into the LGBTQIA plus spectrum in terms of what we're watching right now, mostly with POC and Black content. However, with The Real World, this has been a show I've been following for years since the first season. So I have a lot to say, a lot to give in reference for this. Uh also, I will be talking about the challenge All Stars 3 today as well. I'll be talking about the newest episode. Why the hell is Beth back? God, what horrible casting. And one of my baby daddies had to leave, so I'm upset. Either way, a lot to talk about today through the Paramount Plus network, as you can tell. Uh, I'm talking about the homecoming, I'm talking about the All Stars, and I'm talking about All Star 7, all on Paramount Plus. So if you don't have Paramount Plus, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're going to talk about these shows. Uh, but let's get my social medias out the way. And again, I'll go over the scheduling for what's going to happen next here. And then we'll start the show. Uh, it's at Maddie Rants everywhere except for Twitter, which is at the Maddie Rants. That's in the link tree in the description down below. If you grab a branch, if you eat some fruit, Matt Tivia, you know how to poot. Uh, that Matt Tivia shirt, as well as the Rant Pack shirt, and Sundays are best, as well as the panel, is available with dragqueenmerch.com. Check out dragqueenmerch.com. And you should be able to find my merch with Maddie Rants in there. And grab grab something hot to wear, honey. We, we wear the merch along while watching, please and thank you. Patreon at first, and let me tell you something. My ear is trying to give me a little business. At first, you don't succeed. Mm. <laughs> no, at first, I didn't think the audio was recording for the real world today and the uh, All Stars challenge, and I was like. I just did a whole reaction. I spent the last two hours filming, found out the audio was working. So we are good to go on that. So if you do subscribe to my Patreon for as low as that $1 a month, you will be probably catching this reaction to this episode, as well as the challenge, as well as legendary, as well as all-star seven, as well as many, many other shows that I've re reacted to all available on my Patreon for as low as $1. You can subscribe for higher, but I'm asking for just $1 here. Okay. Uh, Cameo, bookable there. I got one I need to get to. It's been a busy, busy week for your boy. And I said I'd bring you a lot of content, and I meant that. Next week included, now that I've started to catch back up, I will have all that drag con stuff edited and put together for you, but not all at the same time. I'm not just going to push it all out there. Push. I'm going to bring it little by little, piece by piece. They will be edited videos. They will not be lives like this. So hope you all enjoy and have a good time and check that out. I'm going to have to spend some time on those. <laughs> My Tuesday and Wednesday may be completely different than it usually has been. I'll use my Tuesday to edit. So, you ready to talk about this episode? You're ready to go in? You're ready to go in? <laughs> I, look like I'm, I look like I've been cast on a different world. You already know who I'd be. Not, I'm saying Whitley, but you know who I'd be, be okay? <laughs> With this kind of hair. From where you come from. Mm. Eh, it's a different world. From where you come from. Listen. 
Melissa, I put my cocoa pow- cocoa butter, not powder, baby. My cocoa butter's on, all right? So my, my, shout out to Melissa. We love Melissa down. Too bad they don't need to use you anymore. Oops. Or Tokyo. Oh, not the black folks no longer being necessary. Oh, because we got over the racist. Oh, now we're just talking to these people. Oh, the, the, the handbags, the wallets, the clutches, all kinds of distressed leather is what we're getting in today. Uh, uh, hmm, uh, hmm. Where were we? I have to do a disclaimer prior to this because, you know, some people are just so sensitive and I, I don't have time to put a pillow underneath you to wash your feet. This is not communion, okay? We are not about to wash each other's feet. I am not praying over you. None of that. That's for the girls that went to church. You already know what's the tea, okay? Uh, Matt knows this read. We're not doing communion today, brother. That's what's not happening. Oh, at all. (laughs) So here is my disclaimer for the folks. This program is in, is for, oh, whoa, whoa, we're messing up. Wow. This program is for entertainment purposes only and content is not intended to malign any religion, race, company, individual, or wigs, or lack thereof, or yoga pants that are dirty. Mm-hmm. All opinions expressed by Maddie Rance, that's me, are solely their personal views and do not reflect the opinions of every human being on the planet. I promise you. No hate should be sent to any of the shows or individuals mentioned on this program. Please don't be a poop. Hi, I- Inez. I see you on my cash app, baby. Thank you so much for the tippy poo. I will certainly do because I actually talked to them yesterday. Uh, I, If you feel comfortable after viewing this program, please consume some Activia and have yourself a good poot, okay? And again, Inez, thank you for that uh, cash app tip here for the, anybody that wants to throw me a little something for hosting right down here. But yeah, I, I did talk to Alex yesterday. He was, he was in a better spirit, but of course, a lot has happened. So that's none of my business and it's not my place to talk about it. That's his story and he will give it to you the way he's going to give it to you, okay? As far as I'm concerned, he told me what happened. All right, you good, you safe, you fine, cool, great. Let me know if you need anything. And that's where I'm leaving it at with him because that's I don't that's a lot. And again, we're not talking about that today. That's Alex's channel. I love my brother down. Let's get to the real world homecoming here. But I thank you, Inez, for that. Uh let's see here, baby. Let's see. Give me just a second here. Hold on. Okay, sorry, sorry. I have to get this out. I have to get it out. If I don't get it out now, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to. My bad. Thank you. Um Let's have the, this kind of, hey, Sunny Squishy, my love. I love you down. I just hope Matt becomes more open. I grew up in a Christian family where we were always told uh, being gay was bad. As I grew older, I do feel differently. I am so bringing that in. You don't, mm, there was so much to unpack from all of that, like all of it. And I for sure um, definitely am going to go in on that. Like, Absolutely. Okay, so let's see here. Um, (laughs) Hold on. All right, sorry, y'all. I had to make sure some things were put together here. So where we last left off in this review, Matt and his surprise faces were giving just like he normally does. (gasps) It's this, this face, I hate to see from him so much because it's laced in judgment with him trying so hard not to be that girl, which he totally is that girl, that guy, excuse me, because I know for him, it's a sin. It's a sin. Like that face is a trick. It's very triggerable to me because this is that I can't believe what you just said and I can't believe how you feel and I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. And it gives all of that while in the meantime, he's saying, I love you. I respect you. I have to walk away from this. There is a thing that I talked about yesterday that I'm so glad was brought up today in this episode where it came to loving loving the person, 
uh, loving the sinner and not the sin. That's bullshit. It's been that bullshit. That is a bullshit statement. It's an easy blanket way for somebody to still be against you while saying that they don't actually hate anyone because hating someone would be a sin. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, It's a lot. And I really can't give Matt a break here as someone who grew up in the church who may also still be gay. Oh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And trust me, Matt, I tried to pray it away. I went through many different therapies that my parents forced me into to try to take away some femininity, even when I wouldn't even admit to being gay because they continued to threaten me each and every day of my life. But you over here are saying that you cannot understand somebody's choices or or who they are because it's not a choice being gay i'm gonna tell you that right now all right it's not a choice so anybody to tell you that it's on some bullshit if i had a choice to be a com i would not have chosen this lifestyle i'm gonna be real with y'all i would never have chosen this the, the stuff that i went through the pain the hurt the depression the attempts at suicide you think i would actually go through this that's why matt pisses me off like, you honestly think that. And it is ingrained in folks who have that church going, you know, a lifestyle where they've been so embedded into believing something so deeply. But like, it's insane for me to the way he flipped this back on Danny, like, oh, so you're just making me come out to be this bad guy. Because that's literally how he was wording it. W whether he said those exact words or not, that's how he was treating the situation. It's not fair that I'm not allowed to not like something. You're, no, you're not allowed to like it, but we're also, I'm, see, I'm sorry, you are allowed to not like something. You are allowed to disagree with people, but you also need to be held accountable that because you say those things and that you feel those ways, people don't want to deal with you. And you don't get to sit there and play the, can I have grace card, which is what he did to Danny. That pissed me off a little bit. Like, really? Where is my grace? Your grace? God has that for you, not Danny. You can ask for that grace from the Lord. You can do all of that. You're not going to get it from Dan. Hey, Miriam. Hey, baby. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yes, Maddie. Thanks for all your work. Have four days off and look forward to your next uploads on Patreon. Can't wait for your reads this episode. Yes, you will have this episode, the challenge, legendary, whatever episodes come out, and All-Star 7 all on Patreon for these next couple of days. So Miriam, you got a lot of content coming from me. Trust and believe. Plus you'll have probably some drag con stuff thrown in there too. Whoo. Okay. Thank you, baby. Just, just being very honest. Like I am not in the zone. I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the capable space of being in a room with somebody that hates me because of my lifestyle. I have been around Folks that have done all the worst crimes in the world that you can possibly think of. I've been in places where you think folks should never have forgiveness while others are actually sitting there wanting to be forgiven. But there's also the accountability factor that he's not taking place. You are a devout Catholic Christian and you sit in your ways with what you have been taught by the church. You should not feel conflicted in these values so much so that when someone brings a gay man around you, you need to walk out the room. Or, or or something happens where they bring in a tarot card reader. I, this is too uh, much for me. Do you not know? Do you not realize that once again, and I talked about this yesterday, if, you're, if your faith is grounded in the strength that is God, okay? Ha, ah, now I'm going to preach it. And your fence is built strong around this moat, around your kingdom that is of you with God. Nothing shall cross you. Nothing shall break you down. Have you forgotten about that? That's in scripture, by the way. It's very interesting that Matt has decided not to change from the 22 years that he's been gone from the show. And what makes it even worse for me, and I know I've given this man some time and I'm still going to get him today, is the fact that he feels he is a new person. I would never expect to be a dad. Are you sure? Because basically you are a Catholic Christian in a very deep one. If anything, you were going to get married. You were going to have a bunch of kids. You were never going to use contraception. Stop that. You haven't changed at all. You are the still, you're still the same person who gives me all kinds of Pinkberry Platinum Awards membership. Girl, girl gone. 
girl gone. And I'm going to get Julie's ass together too because she had the nerve to bring up this black woman in this situation. I was wondering why she had to even use black woman in this statement to make it some sort. <sighs> Come on, Matt. Come on. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm not done with you. Danny, you're too empathetic for me. I appreciate you being an empath and I know you were holding him to the fire. And I was so happy to say, I was so happy to hear you say, I am not responsible and not, and I'm not going to be responsible for giving you a pass or saying this is okay. Like almost like I'm talking for the rest of the gays out there when you made me feel some kind of way all these years. And now that we're back in this scenario situation all over again, you're still the same guy. That part. <sighs> <sighs> he's too like he's an empath and that is why sometimes i understand danny's way of what's the word i'm looking for here i understand danny's way of trying to find some goodness in the situation and not trying to completely demonize the individual at the same time I hate to tell you, Danny, that conversation you had with him, wherever it's going, that hug, all of that, it don't mean shit, girl, because after this and this is done, he's going to go right back to that. I said what I had to say on TV. You want to know why I'm making this statement? What happened when uh, Matt went outside after that conversation? When he told the producers, y'all try to set me up. Scrammy, I'm going to tell you what Tokyo did, and it wasn't, I want you to take what Tokyo was doing and not give it so much precedence as it's very, he didn't defend Matt for being homophobic. He defended Matt on a, on, on the fact that he is conflicted through his religious values and that where Matt's stance comes from is over the fact that he feels that if he does anything to say, okay, to this, he will be locked out of heaven. Just like how he said to uh, Danny, if you choose to be gay, which is not a choice, then you are going to hell. Okay. So for Tokyo, Tokyo's point, because Danny was going in a little bit was to say, there is an aspect of this that has some sort of confliction with Matt where he is struggling with. That was Tokyo being empathetic in that moment, not defending what Matt was doing. Okay? That's how I looked at it. And so, because trust me, in my reaction, you'll see me go, now, Tokyo, what the fuck are you doing? Also, it's almost like all the black folks had to sit at this table with these white, with, with the white people. And it'd be like, all right, this is y'all stuff now. Here you go. Not to make it a race thing. I know somebody's mad. I did that. I'm black. It's okay. Uh, but low-key, high-key, all-keys. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying. Oh, it's like, oh, the first half of the season was with all the people of color. Now we over here to this part. Just saying. But for Matt, there is a point that I can understand about being conflicted in your own faith about the choices that you make outside of that that could be considered wrong based on text. You're talking to somebody who was raised in the church, who is a, who is a proud homosexual, who understands that sort of confliction. Believe me, I still don't eat pork and certain other foods now because I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. And in that religion of, the, of Christian faith, that Christian religion right there with Seventh-day Adventists, we're not supposed to eat anything with a split hoof or anything that is um, a scavenger that eats off of dead things. It's considered unclean in God's eyes. I still follow through with that. That is still one of my things that I hold dear. And like the conversation we had a little bit later when Julie's sandpaper bag looking to have an ass decides that she needs to say something in reference to her being a Mormon because guess what? This episode's going to also revolve around her. If you didn't know from this ugly dress that she's sitting down with for some odd reason, did they go out to dinner before this? Why is she put on? I bet that's the nicest thing she has too. No shade. A little bit. I know she didn't wash her hair. Mm -mm -mm. It just smelled from here. Look at all this stink over here. Don't it smell funny? Don't it give you all kinds of old cardboard box, wet cardboard box sitting in a closet for too long? It's giving very that. Very that. It's, it's, it's a little bit, oh, the house was abandoned and there's mold. This whole picture. Very her. Matt, let's be very clear here. You haven't changed and you knew coming into the situation that 
you were going to be put on in the hot seat and you tried your damnedest this entire time to be as low as possible on the radar. And you knew when they were going to bring this stuff up that you weren't going to be ready for it. The problem is, Matt, is that throughout these episodes, we watched you be a judgmental asshole the entire time. Am I lying? Every episode, we watched him in the background making smart comments, making these little jabs here and there. And this is just not how, I'm at, how I am. He even dragged Julie. He drags Julie later. After Julie tried to come over there and, and explain some things to him, I gave Julie this much credit this week. She actually explained some stuff to him about where his faith is and how she had to step out of that by understanding what loving everybody really is. And I'm like, well, I mean, she's not lying there. But again, it's like, it's two pieces of shit sitting next to each other on the sidewalk trying to figure out which one's going to get picked up first. At this point. At this point. I see some new Patreon folks. Thank you, baby. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Melissa, no, 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 no. You get my time today because Melissa, they. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, sister. They All they got you doing now is low-key. <laughs> they just have you doing commentary. Melissa literally says everything that we're all thinking. She's like, yes, that is what Matt is doing. However, dot, 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 dot. And it's like, yeah, yeah. We can respect someone for having faith and for sticking, staying, standing their ground. But it's what they are using as their core beliefs, what they are actually standing so hard on, that is really where everyone's finding a way to judge the situation or feel some kind of way. Shout out to Melissa. Um, <laughs> I'm like, what? They got her now just doing commentary. God damn. Like, I want to go in more into Melissa's life. I know we met Shorty and Mercy. I know we've got the whole family bit, but little girl, low key. <laughs> we could have had a whole season of Melissa and I've been fine. Better yet, Tokyo, Melissa, Kelly, Jamie without Julie, and that'd have been, uh, and Danny, and that'd have been a great season. If Julie and Matt weren't there, I'd have had a good time. I'd had a good time. I'd had a great time. We need to have those two pieces of shit there as well. But no, 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 no. Those, don't, don't, don't cat. Uh -uh. All of that just, that would have been a fun season. That would have been a good time. Mm, that would have been fun. Uh, Kelly, I know this anxiety is welling inside of you because you feel very uncomfortable in the multiple situations you've been put in. The way you're handling it is a lot better than Matt because yours is not based in your religion, but just about you as a person. Now, a mother, the way you've handled your life and how you've continued forward here. I feel Kelly's uneasiness is coming from the fact that she is fully aware that Julie is putting on a show. And I will put out, I will point to many moments where this is the case, okay? She's also uneasy about how there is conflict in the house, period, in terms of how Matt is feeling, where she talked to Matt about, you know, I understand where you're coming from, but then asked the questions like, there's just no way around it. Like, how are you going to navigate life if you can't think this way? And all of these people going over these issues from like 22 years ago, especially Julie, Like, Julie's talking about basically cheating on her husband in front of all these married people. Kelly's can't, Kelly's like, this is a lot. <laughs> like, this, is a, this is a lot. She understands the optics of what's happening here as well as how it is going to be perceived later. And it might, it might make her sick to her stomach. It was nice to see her with her husband and the kids and all that. I like Kelly a lot. I just feel like this is not the, she doesn't need this anymore. I think Kelly is past this point of reality TV. And I kind of feel bad for her. If she were to decide to leave the show, I wouldn't blame her. It'd be, I'd be like, girl, it's, I, I feel you. I feel you. Work on that book. Get those things together. Enjoy your family. I feel bad for Kelly. I really do. Because <laughs> it just is like, I don't want this. Like, th that's her right now. I don't want this, you know? And I do, uh, Jarrell, that's a good comment right here. I feel like she's so controlled and afraid of losing it on Julie, so she's being measured as possible. I think Kelly doesn't want to go back to Kelly's old ways, and she's finding that old the old ways are coming up a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And she's like, nah, this isn't healthy for me. And so it's it's turning into her having that anxiety that she's 
been able to control for a little while here, or she had a better understanding over. Julie is having a midnight, a midlife crisis. She seems to really let her arrested development fly when she's in this house. It's just her trying to make good TV. She told us that. I'm. There's more to it. I can really understand where Kelly is coming from. She's really trying not to snap on Julie. And again, Julie says a lot of stuff that is kind of very interesting, gross, and weird. All gross and weird, more than interesting. Julie's husband has entered the house, and this is why I give Kelly credit. Kelly is looking at this man who, not too long ago, Julie was just having a conversation about Jamie and how much she wanted to be with him and her first time and how it made her feel and, you know, all of this stuff, her sexual awakening and all of that is being gushed over to Jamie, almost to bait Jamie into sleeping with Julie. Meanwhile, Julie's husband has now walked in this house, giving all kinds of skim milk. This is the reason why Kelly's uncomfortable, because Kelly is sitting here like, see, we just had this conversation yesterday, and now this man is in here today. I haven't even had 24 hours to process the shit that just came out of Julie's mouth, and now here comes her husband. Do we have a conversation about Jamie? Da -da 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 -da. Like, like, that's a lot. But Julie invited her husband into the house. It gets creepier from here. The husband does not give me... Julie, it gives the... <laughs> Honey, I don't think Julie likes her husband the way she's talking about it. And I'm not trying to be rude here, but let's be very clear. If I was married to somebody, that'd be the one, the one. I would never be thinking about anybody else but that one. That's the one I'm taking care of, If I'm, especially if I'm married got kids there's dna that has been flowed through you both into a body oh no 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 oh no 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 got this man in this house talking about what y'all gonna be doing here i can't wait for y'all to meet jamie so that way you can talk it out with him what does that mean have you and your husband had conversations about jamie outside this house prior to getting there well you know they both got dirty feet you, you can tell. I mean, she came in smelling like a wet mattress and he probably came in smelling like wet patio furniture. I'm, I'm just not, the, I, I can't get into this. And he seems odd and, he, and she seems even worse. Jamie didn't even actually walk up into the room until maybe what, they had to do a group message. He probably didn't even think the husband would still be there. Julie had her husband sit next to her during the group message. Why? Nobody's parents, nobody's exes, no one did that but that but him. I did not like that at all. Why is he there for this situation? This is a house meeting with people that were in the house, not the person who she just married 17 something years ago, left the whole church for. It was very fucking weird. Yes, it was. I did not like it at all. Jamie looking like mm -mm. Come on, Jamie. You, you, mm -mm. They get into Julie's life of being a Mormon on the show and her, of course, you know, having to leave school, the way that she went through the singles program with going back into being a Mormon after going through the show, feeling obligated to because of how her storyline went, producing herself even without the camera there. And Julie ends up meeting her husband through this situation. They decide to leave the Mormon church, which is a big deal. And their families can, of course, be put into a really bad situation of either excommunication being shunned. You know, the families themselves might have to do the same thing. It's definitely something that's really negative in the Mormon church, okay? I'm happy that they found happiness outside of something that they felt so restricted and that was controlling them for them. That I will I will give some credit to for Julie and, and, and being brave enough to step outside of some boundaries here in order to live the life that they want to live. However, since this episode season has started, I can't have that same feeling for too long because I know that you're also producing yourself and that you probably brought your husband here as a producer that you are to make sure that your own words would not be conflicted. They wouldn't be mis misconstrued. I feel you brought this person here today, not because you need someone to sleep with because Loki, you did. 
but also to add to your narrative on this show. You think you're slick, you're not. He's in town on business and da 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 da, da. He was also fully aware that you were going to go film a television show in New Orleans for two weeks. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. That man is in Utah. Where they live? No, excuse me, uh, Wisconsin. So he's got business from Milwaukee to New Orleans. The optometrist? The eyeglass man? Okay. <laughs> I don't believe this. He was a town one visit me. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. You want to know why I don't believe it? Because we'll talk about it later when we get to that phone call that Miss Mama had to walk away from the cameras from, but everyone still has her mic'd up. Girl, please. hi -ya chop This is all for narrative. And you did that so that way no one could interrupt you because you told your husband you were being bullied this entire time. Let, let, let's have that conversation. She kept telling this man she was being bullied the entire time. Now all of a sudden he shows up because he's got business here, bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. That old bullshit. <laughs> They're having this conversation about leaving the church. Look, look at the look at everybody. Melissa's paying attention. That's the paying attention. That's the auntie stare. You know what I'm saying? Hand on the inner thigh, arm back out. I'm leaning here. My face is present in this moment. I'm showing you, I am listening. Kelly. Maybe a tad uncomfortable. It's a cute skirt, Kel. Uh, but she's listening as well. Now, look at Matt. Hands crossed over. Hands on them. What does that normally tell you about someone's body language with this restricted? I feel uncomfortable. They're talking about sexual stuff. They're talking about leaving the church. I would never. Once again, our favorite uh, platinum member from Pinkberry is sitting right over here judging someone. No, he was trying to understand. Mm -mm, no, he wasn't. He His understanding comes with judgment. I need y'all to catch that with him. He's so uncomfortable. Go away. Especially after I, you tried the producers. He literally sat out there and said, y'all are trying to paint me off as this villain Christian and this bad guy who is a homo homophobic. That's not true. I don't like how you're doing this for me. I think it's about best time I go. Well, I'm going to stay here. He even mentioned, I came here to try some healing. You have to be accountable to heal. You have to be accountable for your actions to heal. You could just say you're sorry and it not do anything. I do not like him. And he does dress like he, uh, he dresses like he uh, goes to uh, Air Apostle. Mm -hmm. He gives me all kinds of cotton on, just cheap. Cheap. But I, I, you showed your hand to me, pink man. You showed your hand to me. I already know what it is, uh, Arizona. You literally showed your hand. Once I saw you go out there with the producers, you already knew and you felt from the beginning of this of you coming back in, they're going to paint me as this negative Christian because that's what a lot of Christians are doing today. They're trying to throw this victim card shit out on people, even though they have said some really bogus stuff that they're trying to place on God. Like God is the one telling you to hate people, and he's not. He's not. Trust me. He's not. There's text. There's text to prove that. Y'all just hold what you want to hold, and mm -mm. it gets me, it gets on my nerves. Matt does not, I don't want to be that girl, but him being a Christian is kind of hilarious. It's kind of hilarious. I'm just going to be honest with you. The ones that are always so conflicted with their faith and, and then actually loving their fellow man and, and not using something like the sin in the center. Oh, no, honey. Oh, no. <laughs> I say you play into the devil's hands of hate. Ooh, Matt, don't do that. I am. I am. I say you playing into the devil's hands of hate because you know that's what feeds is chaos and hatefulness. You know, and then, wouldn't it be interesting if you didn't care so much about things that don't apply to you and you actually focus on the stuff that really matters? And while you have text that tells you one thing, you do understand there are also texts in the book that conflicts another text in another, it literally in the same chapter. I think he's just been around a bunch of Christian folks that are honestly homophobic and that has ingrained into him. That's that's what I think. I think he's been around a bunch of homophobic Christians. And I think that has ingrained into him to where he doesn't want to actively say he does not like homosexuals. 
because he knows how it's going to look on TV because that's all this was. I love you. Matt, is there, a, a, uh, Danny, is there any grace from this? I'm like, you are trying so hard not to be canceled because you're homophobic. And that's what's upsetting me is that you're worried about that and not actually about what you're saying and what you look like. For real, for real. Because when you make those <gasps> expressions, those faces, it tells me, Matt, that you are like past the point of almost exploding and saying and calling Danny an FAG, finish the rest. Okay. I'm just going to be real with you. Thank you, Rika. Showing love from San Diego, California. I just had a three day vacation in New Orleans. It was everything and I plan on going back real soon. I hope you got yourself a beignet from Cafe Du Monde. I hope you did and went through the French quarters, baby, because you know, I love me some New Orleans, darling. He is full on Opus de Cat. That. A producer. A, a, a producer. A producer. Um, yes, it's the, the whole saying in, in the book is judge not lest ye be judged. So as Matt has been judging everybody in the house since he's got there, Danny threw that back onto him. Did you see how he responded? I, I, I just, it's, it's so much of a conflict for me. Oh, uh, 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 we're putting you to the fire. And now he, production, y'all are just trying to set me up. Judge not lest ye be judged, my man. And if you can't handle it, like a lot of people who are Christians are, they don't want to be, they don't want to be um, challenged on anything. They don't, they, everything they say is true. They know it. They know it all. They know it all, girl. They know it all. Mm -hmm. They know it all. And y'all know. I again, the, I, I pray. I am a good Christian. The Lord knows we have our relationship. But let me tell you something. I also know when I see a demon in church. When I see a demon in church, okay. I, I can. I. Huh, I become very good at spotting folks who are all about just the words and not the actions behind it. Skip. Okay. Ain't it, Ricardo? Ain't it? Just trying to pull out that skin. Mm-mm-mm. Scram, let's talk about it, because that happened, too. And when challenged, Matt claimed to not know everything about his religion. He seems to know enough to hate the gays. And see, that, that's good that you brought that up, because when he was confronted with that question, with, I'm not sure about everything, then what in the fuck are you talking about? If you're not sure about everything that you're reading, if you're not, if you don't understand everything in the book, how is that so easy for you to catch and grasp onto? Because you were put around it, because you were around people that hated that stuff. You may have been part of a bullying program. I, I can see Matt being a part of a group of, of people calling someone names in school and being and being that kind of guy because he's a Christian. I, I'm putting that on you. I am. I am. I am. I can see it. I can super see it. Over 100 of you in this room, thanks for being here. Let's get off of one berry and get on to the next. Kelly tried to give him a little bit of time and just understand what's going on, but she also felt uncomfortable with the whole husband over here situation, especially after the Jamie conversation that happened just the other day. This was weird. Julie's words. I just wanted to highlight a couple of scenes. You don't have to walk out here because he's not leaving. To then go into, but listen, I'm grateful that you guys have a minute to talk to each other. Why? Why? For what reason? I want my husband to be um, comfortable around you. So when we decide to open this relationship up, Jamie, you can come in. Oh, you're married? Oh, that, that that's okay. She can sit at home. I'm sure she'll understand. You're Jamie and, and you broke my virginity. That, that That's Julie to me. Like... Ew. 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 Jamie's trying to leave, but I think alcohol is going to get the best of Jamie and also him just giving up. <laughs> I think his willpower is pretty low. Julie is in her 40s and she made a bed out of the cushions that these people sit on outside that have been sitting outside that are not covered outside that have the air the earth all elements for captain fucking planet outside on the floor took a tie for a bet 40 
four years old, tied this bit sheet up here and made themselves a cabana to sleep and have sex in. Outside the window that everyone can hear, because it's Julie, Danny, and excuse me, lies, Melissa, Danny, and Kelly, who can literally hear them from their windows right there. It's the same spot where she was talking shit. I'm just going to go under. Oh, my God. Excuse me, but seriously. Ugh. Not to put age into this here, but just to, just to say, like, this is TV. You, again, have told us that you produce yourself. You literally, Jaleel, have a whole room to yourself. You could have put the beds together. Your options were quite, you had a lot. You had a lot of options. You did. Now you're sharing this with a bunch of other married people all in this household. And your children are going to be watching this. When I called her a dirty hamster, it was a joke. Like, I didn't expect her to do what dirty hamsters do. I did not expect her. I, I, I just assumed she was Cassie from Euphoria, but with, with you know, n not as blessed. But this is clearly all for TV. And I, I'm like, your husband, like, you think that we want to see that man and you on TV and your family? Oh, girl, no. I'm almost afraid to find out what her adopted child looks like because if she pulled some blindsided bullshit, I'm going to be some kind of mad. Because I can't imagine it. I can't imagine Julie raising somebody's child of color. I can't imagine it. Everybody needs love. Everybody needs a family. But at the same, this this lady right here and this man who clearly who clearly is a, C, a CUC, uh-huh, uh-huh, it's giving that energy. He's giving me that energy. <laughs> I low-key think that this man's a... I think, I think he is a... Oh, uh-huh. I think so. At this point. Because I'm like, uh, I feel she running a little bit. I feel she... Uh, talk about I'm sex positive. Uh, I think it's something else. Uh, <laughs> he gives me... I'm going to be right underneath my wife while she's getting slammed. I'm going to get all those juices in my face. Definitely that. Sunny Squishy, I think he did not want to come and she sort of forced him into it and uh, they got into an argument possibly about it. And so she said, just let me run, let me do what I do and I got it. I, I bet you money. I bet you money. I know he wasn't enthusiastic to come. There's no way. Not looking like that. Now, she leaves this man. He goes off to go do whatever he's going to do. Uh, he's clearly still in his hotel room going to work. That man went to his hotel. He went to his hotel room waiting for his next flight home. Probably was going to stay there till the show ended. Y'all ain't going to be there that much longer. Hmm. To then not maybe an hour or two later... This argument happens with her husband calling her about a Spotify playlist that Julie put together called Roping, and Jamie is on the playlist. And all the songs have some sort of sexual meaning to it or whatever. He was breaking it down. Julie says there's nothing to worry about. Oh, my God, no. It's just for working out. Da -da 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 -da. How old is Julie? How old is Julie? How old is, is Julie? Y'all are arguing over a Spotify playlist? I can come pick you up right now. I can take you home right now. Okay. I got to wrap this up so I can get to my next review, y'all. Um. <laughs> It's a pl 
playlist from Spotify, you 44-year-old fucking dope? Like, are you kidding me? Like, are you joking me? Are you joking me? I don't believe her. And I don't even think it's over a Spotify list if you really want to go there. But anywho, Kelly uh, announces to Danny and Melissa that she is thinking of leaving. And of course, Danny being the perfect empath that he is, is trying to make sure, no, hey, do what you got to do. But we would really hate to see you go because you're kind of important for a few of us here who need an anchor on this ship. Danny and Matt have a conversation while both wearing the inappropriate shoe. Danny was fine, but Matt had those high top white shoes with this look and it just is not giving. It never gave. He never had style in my opinion. Danny sort of gives Matt a pass. I'm going to be very real with you, Danny. You gave him a pass. I I was like, okay, girl, you, you kind of fell back in this moment for me. I'm not asking for Danny to hate Matt, but I needed Danny to hold him to the fire a little bit deeper because Matt's coming off like a victim in the situation when he's not, he's not a victim. He said some things that were really fucked up to you. That apology was needed and necessary. That apology can only be held actually accountable and fully accepted, say for me, if Matt decided to not show he disliked gays and also found himself to be an ally versus anything else. We're not asking him to join the LGBTQIA plus community here, but you didn't take any accountability. Danny, you just let him have a pass. And this kind of sucked to watch that. We'll be okay. No, you said okay because you knew he didn't actually take accountability here. And he once again put his faith into the forefront outside of him being a person, just like how he felt some kind of way with Melissa and the tarot card reader and how Melissa said, I... I respect your faith, but at the same time, it's about what you make as a decision as your own individual being, you know? Matt's still homophobic to me. Sorry, not sorry about it. I, I don't think there's any accountability here. And I think that Matt just wanted an apology from Danny because he put his faith into a different perspective that he didn't want it to be, like being negative and being a Christian. It's, there's positives and negative sides to that, Matt, but I don't believe you. I don't trust you. I hope we don't see you again. I mean that. You were definitely one of the people that I did not want to ever see again on the real world. And every time I saw him on the challenge, I was like, oh, they brought the homophobic guy in there. Watch the gays go home first. And did. So yeah, chop. Now that her husband is gone, Julie's plan can come into fruition as she's got Jamie by herself. Oh, she's wearing her quirky glasses. Are you giving version again? Jamie, with your 55-year-old face and your 44-year-old self, would you listen to me play my fucking ukulele and look like a total douche nart? Sure. Do, 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 do. All of this drinking has now led them into the living area, which I think was lovely. So that couch looks amazing, by the way. I love that couch. But they're playing darts from afar. They're yelling and being loud. And of course, Julie calls it the senior citizen home because everybody goes to sleep a little bit early. They're a little bit older. I go to sleep early. And I'm in my 30s, bitch. But Danny has been awakened by this. Like, what are y'all doing? This is not a good look. It's a weird look that this married woman and this married man are sitting here playing darts together downstairs after her husband was just here after she just got in an argument with her husband over a playlist that had Jamie added to the Spotify playlist that he can clearly see, which I'm also wondering. So he was on Spotify and just know some random playlist and was like, let me go through this to see what the music is. That's what happened. Okay. Her husband is calling her. Her husband is calling her. Her husband is calling her. She even had it to where Jamie was going to pick up the phone. She, you could pick up the phone. It's not going to matter. It's not going to care. It's like, what? What do you mean? This man was just upset. We'll find out what happens on the next episode, but let's be very clear here. Julie knows what she's doing. Julie is a producer. She's told us that this isn't real and we shouldn't take her seriously. She said all of that in the hot tub. Just, just so we're mighty clear, Julie said all of that in the hot tub. I can paraphrase it. I can put it together. I am trying to make a TV show. These people are boring. I wish I could have sex with Jamie. I'm a married woman. I don't care. I don't take this seriously. I want to be back. I want to be famous again. That is Julie. That is Julie right now. So all of this, I feel, is bullshit. I feel that Kelly, 
Melissa, parts of Danny, Tokyo, and sometimes Jamie when he's not around Julie are the only people I find some sort of genuineness from. I, I, I can't do Matt and I can't do Julie. I just won't. She has literally played this up for quite some time and she's finally getting what she wants because she brought her husband in and it's almost like, Oh, now he knows what you look like and how this is going to work. So he should be fine. The next episode has her talking about a hall pass, y'all. A hall pass. A hall pass. A hall pass. I bet they never even had the conversation. And all of a sudden, she just says it to Jamie to make him feel good. Okay, y'all. I got to go. I got to get ready for this challenge uh, review that I'm going to be going live at 3 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. We got to talk about the return of Beth and the fact that one of the finest men in the challenge has been <laughs> eliminated so early. Sadness, sadness, sadness. However... Um, if you want to continue this conversation, please get into the comment section after this live video and give your opinions on this, right? Also, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for the super chats today. And thank you for anybody that th threw a tip my way. I appreciate it. Smashly. I'm praying that all the spouses come to the house at the last day. I'm praying. <laughs> I almost don't want it to happen because Melissa's still there. <laughs> uh, Tokyo is single. You know what I'm saying? His cute self. His ah 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 ah. They done. They they did Tokyo with my girl Melissa dirty this week. Either way, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I love y'all so 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 much. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment. I will see y'all for the challenge review in just a few minutes, less less than forty minutes actually. So, um, hugs and kisses. My best love and wishes to you. Remember, you woke up today, so you already defeated half the day. If no one told you they love you, I most certainly do. Puss puss, and don't forget to listen. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Listen. Yeah.